might have come from somewhere else But this is where we found ourselves Welcome to the local show People you work with, people you know Welcome to another edition of The Local Show here on Grassroots Community Network. I'm Eric Scarvin, your host. Thanks for joining us, guys. And welcome to our Facebook audience and YouTube audience. Thanks so much for joining us here on The Local Show, where we feature inspirational locals each week. What I mean by that, guys, is people going after their dreams, having success, experiencing success, and sharing that. And on that note, I've got a return guest and a first-time guest. The returning guest used to be our mayor of Aspen, I want to welcome back Steve Scadron to the show. Thanks, welcome Eric. Back, Thanks Steve. for having me. It's fun to be here. Now Dean Scadron and Vice President at yeah. CMC Aspen. I'm going to need you to call me Mayor Dean Vice President Scadron. <laughs> Mayor <if I> <laughs> Dean Vice President. <laughs> or just line up all the titles, buddy. <laughs> so welcome to the show. Welcome back, I should say. Yeah. Thanks, Eric. And Jamie Abbott, Director of Development, or Development Director, Yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. CMC Foundation. Yes. Thanks for having us. Welcome to the show, Jamie. Thanks so much. So thanks for being here, you guys, especially during this kind of uh, unusual time, might we say. And I would be remiss if I didn't start with talking about COVID. And Steve, just kind of through these last several months, you know, we hear on the news all the bad things and, you know, struggles and challenges. And they're real and they're tough. But what are a couple of good things that have come out of this for you that maybe some lessons you've learned or some yeah. silver linings that you've experienced during the during the COVID yeah, period? Just regarding COVID, I just want to say I'm socially distanced from Jamie. She's perfectly <laughs> lovely and I would be sitting more appropriately. But Thanks, Steve. I want to appreciate be respectful. that, you know, yeah. protect my reputation. <laughs> so, Eric. It's respectful and it's safe and, uh, and professional. So, let me comment on something interesting about, about the COVID environment. Um, so, I was, uh, I went to campus each day when things were closed down. I was considered essential because it's a building maintenance thing. And it was me and our Miguel, our facilities guy who did a great job. Buildings, <laughs> buildings never been cleaner. So I, I, bike, I ride my bike the four miles from town out to CMC every morning. And uh, when I would ride through town, this is early COVID, I would ride through town, they get on the bike path down 82 and then pull into the CMC parking lot where I went into an empty building and I was there all day alone, except for Miguel who was doing some cleaning. And then I would hop on my bike at the end of the day. I'd bike down the bike path, not a single person. There was nobody. 82 was empty. Uh, the CMC building was empty. Town was empty. And it was it was really um, it was really interesting. And I kept thinking about the uh, this um, aspiration of locals who say, you know, let's turn Aspen back to the old days, or let's go back to the 1970s, the quiet years. Uh. You know, and uh, be careful what you hope for. <laughs> that, that's, that's what I was thinking. So. Right. Well, so quiet, eerie though. Eerie, yeah. Kind of. Yeah kind of scary even scary, to yeah. me like when I was cruising around in those early times you know and Jamie you know I mean what's it been like for you and you know maybe some good things coming out of it I mean we know kind of about the scary eerie and it was quiet although now the summer it's it's quite active and quite dynamic in town but Right. I mean, well, in the middle of everything, I bought a new house out at the ABC <laughs> right by campus. Congratulations. Right by campus. Yeah. Well, that's so a huge silver lining. It was a huge silver lining and getting settled into my little neighborhood and, and not leaving it very often. And my position is sort of college wide. So it's all of the CMC campuses, all 12 campuses throughout the state. Wow. I'm, I'm it, like, you know, kind of I, I'm checking in on all of everything that's happening in all those different communities. So I okay. had this chance and I just started really at the beginning of this year, get, you know, so getting to know all of those different regional development officers and Steamboat Springs and Leadville and Breckenridge and, um, and Edwards and Vail, like, like, you know, I'm getting to know them all over WebEx, like over Zoom calls, basically. Right. right, and, right. And Zoom just, relationships. Yeah. So it was, it, but, but really getting used to it and it becoming, you know, it's it was nice to not be traveling all over the state to be right. meeting with everybody, yeah. you know, right. and, and to get to do it all from the comfort of my living room right, while my right. kids were doing school in the next room. You know? <laughs> well, kind of an opportunity to, you know, to have the time to move, to have yeah. the time to communicate with all these people. Yeah. You know, it's kind of simplified our, our schedules. Yeah. So we've been able to focus maybe a little more on certain things. And for me, it was more like if I can't work, I'm going to work out. Yeah. You know, you could call it COVID fitness or whatever you want to call it. But I know a lot of us were so grateful to have our mountains, you know, to yeah. skin up. Yeah. 
Yeah. As far so as the end of the ski season went, yeah. and, that was you huge. know that was a huge blessing. Right. Even groomed runs. Gro oh. I mean, that's why I wrote, had to write a letter to the editor yeah. to thank Ski Co. I saw that letter, Eric. It's good job. Well, thanks. Yeah. I mean, it was so so many things to be grateful for, and yeah. so so Steve, that was interesting because I mean, all of a sudden you're like you're the dean, yeah. you know, in recent months, and then you're sitting at this yeah. college like by yourself, yeah. basically <laughs> with another guy doing maintenance. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty wild transition well, there. What it allowed me to do, and we can get into this a little bit later, was think crea creatively about the role the college can be playing in the community. Yeah. Because it's been my contention that um, CMC, at least the Aspen campus, hasn't necessarily evolved along with the community itself. Right. And a local college's primary role is to help sustain a community over the long term, support its economy among other things. And, I, and it gave me time to really focus on some of the components that Jamie and I can work on to deliver um, a better, I think, return to the Aspen community who's helping support this institution. Right, and help, help CMC Aspen evolve and change and, yeah. and be more integrated with exactly. the community. So we've got so many of, of those aspects to talk about, like Good. affordable housing, which is yeah, so critical. Yeah, yeah. Programming, you know, how do you involve yourself more at the city and the county governments, for example. So guys, we're gonna take a quick break, rehydrate, Get ready for some really heavy talking, <laughs> like talking intervals. Yeah, good. Keep it in the athletic <laughs> metaphor. <laughs> and we're going to talk about some uh, more fun adventures because, you know, summer is so much about yeah. adventure. So, so much to get to. But first, we want to take a quick break. I do want to thank CMC Aspen, Aspen Square, Klug Properties, Live Aspen Art, White River Overland. Right there, Scott. <laughs> uh, Sundog Athletics in Picking County Landfill. Picking County Landfill. You guys are going to walk with parting gifts if you make it through the show yeah. from our partners at Picking County yeah. Landfill. We'll go to our only break of the show, guys. We'll be back in two minutes with Steve and Jamie from CMC Aspen to update you on what you guys can expect in the year ahead. So don't go away. White River Overland specializes in camper van upfitting and overland outfitting. Catering to mountain dwellers and outdoor enthusiasts, many of WRO's builds are purpose-driven to facilitate and enhance skiing, cycling, camping, climbing, and river adventures. Nestled in the White River National Forest, close to the deserts of western Colorado and Utah, WRO also rents camper vans and accessories. More at whiteriveroverland.com. CMC is preparing the people who make Aspen work. CMC Aspen collaborates with the community, providing skilled workers, future leaders, and problem solvers, meeting our economy's needs, ensuring opportunity, and workforce integrity for generations to come. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their their dreams of owning an Aspen snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. Live Aspen Art is a working studio at the base of Aspen Highlands. Come meet the artists and view both finished pieces and works in progress by owner Olivia Dane of Visiting Artists, or take private art classes offered for kids and adults. Olivia's recent works are also on view at Opera Gallery at the base of Aspen Mountain. For more information, contact Olivia at 970-379-2539 for an appointment or visit liveaspenartgallery.com. Welcome to the local show. People you work with, people you know. We're back here on the local show. Thanks for sticking with us here, guys, each week on Grassroots Community Network. Thanks for watching us live on Facebook, guys. We've seen our viewership increasing dramatically and... Um, yeah, because people stay at home more and more and watch TV more and more and are online more and more. And um, we were talking a little bit off camera about some of the interesting things. Uh, Aspen's very busy this summer. But more relevant is you guys are gearing up 
um, for school this month. Yeah. And Jamie, what's that looking like in terms of like, is it online? Is it in person? Is it a hybrid? Or that's what the big hot conversation around education is right now. And right. It's, a, looking it's for a mix guys? of all of those things, right? They're, they're kind of online classes, there's flex classes, and there's the in-person classes, which are the ones that can't be done remotely. So anything for like EMT training or nursing or maybe art classes that are for credit. Um, going Finger forward. painting? I wanted to do that. <laughs> This summer. I think that non-credit <laughs> class isn't being offered in the fall. <laughs> well, but maybe going forward, Eric, stay tuned. <laughs> Keep looking at that bulletin. <laughs> we'll yeah. make it through to hopefully some form of more normal, you know, yeah. the new normal, I guess. Yeah, but just figuring it out like every other, you know, educational institution. It's a big pivot, for, you know, yeah. across the country, all over the world. Right, so, right. And CMC has been doing a great job um, of accommodating students. Yeah. And Steve, how would you get, I mean, uh, generally speaking, you know, we could talk about how is CMC different than, say, a university. Um, like I went to the state university, one of the universities in Wisconsin, where I stretched that out to six years. <laughs> That's a whole nother conversation. Where, where, where were you? Stout? At Stout. Were you at Stout? UW Stout, because I was a hotel restaurant major. Yeah. Um, so like John Belushi, mm -hmm. I, you know, Bluto, I, I stretched mine out to six. I think he went seven years. He was a seventh year <laughs> senior yeah. from my memory of the Belushi. movie. <laughs> but yeah. now that we're moving more online, yeah. that presents another interesting question. Like what would be a difference on online programs at CMC, say, versus online programs at CU? Yeah. Yeah. You know, how does that differ? Is it more the it's, same now? Yeah, or it's, how, it, how would you it, talk about that? You know, it's similar. There was a really interesting CNN interview, Eric. Uh, it was the, I believe he was the dean of the Georgetown Business School. And he was talking about these colleges as businesses. And he referred to Harvard as, and I'm probably off on some of my details here, so I apologize. But he, generally, it was a discussion at Harvard. He said, he said, better you should. He said, Harvard's like an expensive Netflix. Essentially, right. colleges have become content generators. Yeah, exactly. And now for $49,000, you can subscribe online and get all of your educational content. I thought that was a really interesting comment. So in a sense, Eric, your question is, what's the difference between the institutions and when you're losing the social interaction that yeah. being on campus brought you, you right. know, it's easier to equate some of the educational experiences you're now getting. You know, CMC certainly isn't... Uh, huge residential campus like CU Boulder is, but um, you can now you can take classes online at CMC that will transfer to to Boulder. And you can make a compelling argument to you might as well stay home and do it here. Right. We're, seeing, we're seeing a lot so of that. So less difference. Less difference. Less yeah. difference now. More online means less difference because like you say, you lose some of that, that or a lot of that social aspect. Yeah. Um, so that's really interesting. And you guys, I noticed from, um, I recently had a, one of your very well done mailers <laughs> that you guys are the most affordable bachelor degree yeah. in Colorado. So the value proposition, Jamie, seems like it's very good. Yeah. Like in, and maybe even better now. I, I think for sure we're seeing a lot of parents who are trying to make the decision about what are their kids going back to school this fall and saying, well, let's stay home. And, you know, it's two thousand dollars, you know, in the year for, you know, right. or 80 if in district. It's like eighty five dollars a credit. So, you know, it becomes a very accessible, affordable option. Um, and on top of that, you know, my work at the foundation is to provide, is to fundraise for scholarships. So there's a, there's a, there's a tremendous amount of scholarship money available for people too. There's scholarships wow. for people who've been put out of work because of COVID, you know, specifically for that purpose. There's, um, there's, there's um, Fun Sueños, which is for kind of DACA, you know, folks. I mean, there, there's, a, there's a lot of money out there for people who are, want to go back to school um, or start school at, at CMC and campuses throughout the state. So it's a really, it's a, it's a great there, institution. The, the opportunities we're starting to provide in our valley, and our responsibility yeah. is Aspen and Carbondale. I've got two campuses. So we can talk about the valley as a whole. Okay. And our primary responsibility is, is to um, provide a skill set, train a workforce that can help sustain this valley-wide economy. And we have a lot of flexibility in how we can modify these programs, and we're starting to do some really fun things. So your, your question's a good one. 
So then you would be, will you be more in line then with tourism industry type businesses like, I, mm -hmm. I think there's been a transition to some hotel restaurant yeah. courses already, right? Yeah. The last couple of years at CMC? We, we, we have five core pillars and one of those is hospitality and culinary. Okay, there and we just go. hired a gentleman named Ari Lewis, he's fantastic, who's our um, uh, faculty member who will be teaching those courses. Okay. And the online version of these courses over the summer have been jammed, been really packed. It's exciting. Yeah. Something that's... Well, Jamie. I was Go just going to add sir. to that and say a big part of what Steve and I have been trying to do together is to, to work closely with the business community and the, in the city and county governments to say, what do you need? Where are the lacks? What, what's the training that would help you as an employer? Right. And so we're really starting those conversations and then trying to build programming you know, okay. that fills that those need. Those gaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, like Steve said earlier, the, you know, a community... You know, a college like CMC is most effective when there's that connection between right. the business community and the school. Right, so. right. It's not like you're out there independent. Hey, we'll just offer whatever courses we'd exactly. like, no matter what's going on in the community in the valley. And that was huge for me, obviously, being a hotel restaurant guy. I did finally get my bachelor's <laughs> after six years. <laughs> now, that did include a year living out here. Yeah. And that brings up an interesting topic because my niece, who was actually supposed to be an RA and a... Uh, TA, yeah. this in her sophomore year at Boise State, is now taking the year off because uh -huh. yeah. they're totally online. So she's like, I'm not going to go up there and do that, you know, and it's, you know, it doesn't, it just didn't make sense. So then what are all these kids going to do? Like some of them, you, that must be hitting you guys. Like, oh, we're going to take a year off now. Are you seeing some of that, Jamie? I mean, we're like, it's like time to regroup and maybe do something different this year? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We're seeing a lot of that. Yeah, our numbers are way up, registration numbers. I would it, think it's so. really exciting. It's fun. It's fun. So, what is the, like, your enrollment? Er, what, what's unfortunate is that it's all online. So yeah. we don't we don't see have the critical mass of people and that energy on campus. Yeah. That, that's that's disappointing. Yeah. So, so you just have a few people around because you have some of these in person classes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like if I go in and do like medic first aid CPR, you know, something like that is really right. hands on, yeah. literally. Exactly. So you have some energy. And but our class it's... sizes are limited. You know, we're we're a max of I think nine with an instructor. It's ten, and that's all spaced and distance in our biggest rooms. Uh, and we have to limit the number of simultaneous classes running simultaneously for obvious reasons. You can't have people crossing in the hall, crossing in the hallway. The whole thing's a challenge as it is for everybody. So we're we're figuring it out also. Being but, online, can you have more enrollment though? I mean, since you don't have the physical, yeah, you know, uh, restrictions with yeah. the building, you can have more people, you know, enrolled in CMC. To a point, yes. Yeah. But then there's still kind of the the student teacher interaction and, and the, right. the kind of the max capacity where the teacher, you know, the, the faculty can can provide the best instruction and feedback, right, uh, okay. at some point. Eric, if you had and what kind of number is that? Like, do you, you have 10,000 like, kids for this season or 5,000 or what? I think we're more like ballpark. 25, right? 25 yeah. per class, for, for most classes, I would say. But what would be, like, total enrollment in CMC Eric, Aspen? We're talking oh. just, just the Aspen campus? Because yeah. some of this now will be... Just Aspen, right. I guess. We have something, in total, there's something like uh, degrees... 500, around 550 or something like that okay. is what it comes out to be. Okay. That, that's a general number. But then there's credit students and there's non-credit students. If you want right. to take a pottery class, right. continuing <laughs> education class, okay. you know, you're, you're technically a student, but you're a non-credit student, so the, the numbers get a little bit. Okay. But it breaks down to something like the Aspen campus. I think it's around, there's 500 or so students seeking degrees, just like you were at Stout. Okay. <laughs> and your, and your tradition. Stout was a little bigger yeah. though. Stout started at five thousand. By the time yeah. I got out, it was like eight thousand. But college wise, so it, so it really blew up. You know, in terms of Jamie, what's the number college wise? Seventeen thousand or something? I think that Seventeen thousand. Right. That's across all, all eleven CMC. campuses. Okay. Yeah. What about Carbondale as compared to Aspen? Is Carb it similar enrollment? No, it's, Carbondale has better numbers than Aspen. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's a different. It's a different demographic. Because there's more housing. Um, I mean, generally speaking, the the, pop be... the population base down Valley is okay. greater than it is here. Okay. Um, Between and the, Glenwood, Carbondale, Basalt, yeah, kind of. Yeah, and the, I'll tell you, the profile of the resident there, not surprisingly, is quite different than it is here. And what students are seeking are, is different down there than what they're seeking here. We, I think one of the challenges for the Aspen campus is the emphasis on continuing ed. And that's, that's the fun classes we take. You want to take an art class, learn to paint. You said finger painting. <laughs> or whatever. I took mountain bike maintenance. One of the most fun. I mean, when you're really little, it's like mm -hmm. one of the first really fun art things you remember and then sure. later on I remember my mom was an artist and she taught us how to tie-dye and 
it's one of those things that are just all time lifetime memories, you know, and it's Absolutely. fun, you know, and I, I'd like to do some more creative things. I actually have three artists in my family, yeah. but it'd so be fun for me to dip in and maybe do a pottery class at some point. It's so, those are so fun and so popular, and they'll always be a core component of what's offered at the Aspen campus. But what we're working on are, is the, um, the curriculum side where, where we can um, help, as I said earlier, help sustain our kind of value-wide economy and perhaps help to diversify it away from these kind of boom and bust development cycles and being simply a, kind of real estate oriented. We hope we can, one of the things we're starting to work on, um, and this is, this is very new and I don't quite have the talking points down, but let me break the story here. I wanna, we're working on a, a light manufacturing program um, connected to the outdoor rec industry. And it flows, it really flows directly from the whole uphill economy initiative we started at the city a few years ago. And this is the logical continuation where we can now build the curriculum to train the workers who can then be, participate in that ecosystem. And then we're working on the private sector side to, um, to attract uh, manufacturing businesses here, light manufacturing connected to the outdoor rec industry. So we're actually now carrying, taking this public policy initiative that we started at the city okay. and, and, and uh, having it come to fruition both on the skills training and on the uh, job side. So that's so. part of the evolution that you two are working on is again that kind of integration with the city, the county, the exactly. valley. And some of that is that uphill, I was gonna ask, ask that specific yeah. question, that uphill economy that you had started to work on as mayor, yeah. and now you can continue on through CMC. So Eric, one of the other cores, so we, I said we have these five cores, core to the- uh, Pillars. Pillars, five pillars. Um, one is, I said, uh, hospitality and culinary. Um, one is this continuing education. Those are two big parts, the art classes and all the fun things. Yeah. Not that math isn't fun, Eric, because it's just, <laughs> Oh, I was, yeah, I was just I, so I into math. <laughs> it was actually my worst yeah. topic yeah. in the, the high other, school and college. One of these other components <laughs> is, is the mountain economy ecosystem. Okay. And that's a big thing at CMC across the entire region. And we have, uh, we have now an opportunity to be, the, be a part of that core. Steamboat works on hard goods related things. You can take a ski and snowboard business class here and learn how to make skis, a ski or ski business. Oh, Leadville's cool. working on avalanche sciences. They do all the AVI stuff. And we're going to uh, we're gonna take a shot at um, the soft goods side of it. The, okay. the uh, outdoor gear, and design. apparel design. So kind so, of closing also the like environmental loop of that, of, of reusing and repurposing outdoor gear soft goods right right so. i mean that just seems obviously so relevant in yeah. our, especially in our community yeah the whole environmental side of things and people can take courses that deal with like re resort management is yeah. that available yeah, yeah. okay yeah. absolutely so more in tune what are some of the other like um jamie like short-term goals for like this this season coming up and maybe a couple long-term goals that both you and steve are working on i mean we talked about a couple of these things like sort of, so I, in the short term, I think we're, I mean, we're really looking at the building the curriculum for, for this, this new program with the, the soft goods manufacturing. Um, we're looking at the other, at really building out the other the curriculum, the resort management, the culinary program that, that's here and building those partnerships with the business community. We're, we're working with the city um, to, on some of their priorities around childcare in the in the valley, and so we're looking at um, a space, you, you know, repurposing a space on the CMC campus for infant childcare, which nice. is kind of short-term partnership to look at a long-term goal of more early childhood education training, so that we can be training more of the preschool teachers in this valley okay. and, and 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 helping to build, you know, give the business knowledge also so they can run their own, you know. Uh, you, all, you know, from kind of soup to nuts there right. on the early childhood. Um, it's that's a, one of the critical pieces, though, is the people mm -hmm. to take care of the kids, right? That's, that's a, one of the yes. things that we're, that we're short right. on. So it's what huge. we did, Eric, was look at the city and county's priorities. And I think this city council okay. has early childhood education as a priority. Yes. And I've talked with the city manager, and they came to us and said, would you guys be interested in? And we've responded by offering the room that Jamie, so we're going to just describe. So we're going to have an infant care. We're not in the infant care business, but we're going to be providing um, a room where the city's going to run Okay. for uh, infant care starting right around the ski season, should there be one, of course. We're already down to just a couple of minutes, but maybe, Steve, for a minute, maybe you could um, 
talk about housing and affordable housing has been talked about. In fact, one of the reasons you were brought in you yeah. know, as dean and yeah. vice president yeah. was the need for more housing. Right. Can you touch on that a little bit with CMC? Yeah. Eric, I know this has always been a big issue for you, and we know how important yeah. it is for this community. Huge. And, and uh, as we develop these programs, um, we, we believe that um, it'll be it'll be appropriate and necessary for CMC to have provide some kind of residential housing. Ideally, we'd like the Aspen campus to become a residential one rather than a commuter one. Right. And we're looking at all options now from building something on the site there, it's kind of a tight footprint, or perhaps partnering with other housing projects or looking at other parcels um, okay. so, so we can better serve the needs of the community by housing um, students who can then become part of the workforce. Okay, and in our last minute, you guys, a fun question. It's two-part. A fun new adventure you'd like to do yet this summer and a fun class, say a non-credit class, you would like to take at CMC. Mm. So, Jamie. Steve's up first. Let me think okay, about Steve, it. Okay, Steve, you're up first. Fun adventure, fun new adventure, Eric, and a fun new class. Where yo quiero tomar una clase de español <laughs> in <laughs> CMC. <laughs> You remind me okay. of Senora Bernstein, <laughs> senior year in high school. Yo también. <laughs> Enrique, Enrique, duermes? Tu duermes? Are you asleep Eric? again, Eric? So that's my fun, that's what I want to take, my fun class at CMC. I want to take another Spanish class because I'm learning Spanish. Okay. okay. And my adventure, Eric, I've been on top of four 14ers already, and uh, I'm going after a couple more 14ers. The Crest Stones are next on my list. Okay, nice. Awesome. Jamie, how about you real quick? Yo también. I want the Spanish <laughs> class also. You okay? Yes. <laughs> and I'm gearing up for a big Grand Canyon trip, so I'm, that's my next big adventure. Oh, that sounds yeah. awesome. That sounds. Yeah. Well, you guys just gave me a couple new ideas. Did you guys have fun on the show today? Loved it, Eric. Loved thank it. you so much. You guys, thanks so thank much for you. being here, Jamie and Steve. And thank you guys for watching The Local Show. White River Overland specializes in camper van upfitting and overland outfitting. Catering to mountain dwellers and outdoor enthusiasts, Many of WRO's builds are purpose-driven to facilitate and enhance skiing, cycling, camping, climbing, and river adventures. Nestled in the White River National Forest, close to the deserts of western Colorado and Utah, WRO also rents camper vans and accessories. More at whiteriveroverland.com. Celebrating another great summer season by offering up to 25% off their nightly rates. Aspen Square Hotel is the hospitality place featuring fireplace studio suites and larger condominiums with full hotel style services in the center of downtown Aspen. Aspen Square is proud to support The Locals Show. Sundog Athletics, Aspen's adventure sports school, is your opportunity to experience one-of-a-kind guided adventures and gain new skills to experience the thrills of mountain and road biking, fitness hiking, and Aspen's exclusive canoeing adventure. They can be reached at 970-925-1069, and fresh updates can be found at Sundog Athletics on Facebook or sundogathletics.com. Welcome to...